been talking to us for some time now about our circumstances, the difference between our circumstances and ourselves, and how important it is that being ministers of Christ, that our circumstances many times remain unchanged. In fact, I think for the majority of our prayer time, we pray, and when I say we, I mean Christian people, I mean the, the body of Christ. We pray about our circumstances. And generally, those circumstances deal with outside things, either outside people, conditions, maybe finances, maybe relationship, maybe whatever. But we pray about our circumstances. I don't know. I just like to think that as I get a little older, a little wiser in the things of God, and a little more clear depth of understanding of the Word of God, I'm not sure that we shouldn't spend the majority of our time praying for ourselves. Now, that may sound selfish, but it's not. What do I mean by that is this. The Lord, if my circumstances remain unchanged, change me. And I think we should be praying about God, change me first, before we pray, God, do something about my circumstances. I really believe we should bring our own selves before the Lord first. And say, God, that which is in me, something in me. The psalmist prayed it all the time. Lord, in me. Dwell in me. Work in me. I'm going to get through this if the circumstance is not going to change or it may run its course and run out at some point in time. But you know what? If, if we're not changed in the midst of those circumstances, if we remain unchanged, then we haven't grown at all. We haven't increased ourselves in the Lord at all. And folks, I, I just think that I want to encourage you this morning in your prayer life and in your walk with Jesus Christ that you challenge God for more. Amen. Now more doesn't always mean a lot. More can sometimes mean just a little bit. If I was to say to you, all right, Christian people, congregation, we, we need to do more. <laughs> well now, we, we misconstrue that. We think, dear Christmas, I'm already giving it. You know, let, let, me, let me give the example in a tangible manner. We give $100. Okay, you give $100 to missions. Let's just say. I'm, I'm just using an example. I say, congregation, we need to do more. And so instantly we think to ourselves, Jeez, I'm already giving $100. Bucks, now i got to give $200. You know, that's not what more means. More can mean 10 bucks. Depends on a person's financial condition. <clears throat> or more could mean a dollar or five dollars. Especially if you're giving it, you know, to like missions or to someone who's in need and you're giving it as unto the Lord. Can you say amen? amen. So, so when the scripture talks about more, when I say more, th that doesn't necessarily always mean a lot. It may just mean one degree or two degrees or one percent or something. Time, talent, effort, money, you know, whatever. So I'm going to challenge us this morning. I'm going to challenge you and my own self. First of all, to come before God and continue seeking the Lord on behalf of your own self and your personal relationship with Him. Because folks, I think that if we get a grasp of this, now I, I would never desire for anybody to ever experience tragedy or devast never, devastation, never, never, never. Never, never, never. However, in our average everyday life's circumstances, I believe we can go through all of them with peace and joy and love and contentment in Jesus Christ when Jesus Christ is working in us more than He's working in our circumstances. Because He wants to work in us before He works in circumstances. Hallelujah. And I believe that's the separation. That's the difference between those who are mighty in Christ and those who just try to survive in Christ. I want to be mighty in God. Can you say amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And that reminds me, we've got a brand new attendant this morning with us. And, uh, and mommy. God bless you, mommy, and the new <coughs> little, little boy, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. So congratulations once again, Grandma and Grandpa. And uh, on a new addition to your family. Praise God. All right, turn your Bibles, please, to Ephesians chapter 3.
And so as I speak to us this morning, I, I want to encourage us to the intent of more and not necessarily with the insinuating of the lack thereof. Did you hear what I said? I want to encourage us to the intent of more and not insinuating for the lack thereof. Does that make sense? You know, many times we, in coaching, I tell my players, when I have direct coaching with them, I tell them, don't, you know, when I get after you or when I yell at you or when, you know, when I confront you about your effort or whatever, and I'll, I'll, I'll just get after you concerning your effort and attitude. It's not, I'll never get after you about your ability, because I know what your ability is, okay? But I will get after you about your effort and attitude. Now, and don't take it personal. It's nothing personal between me and you that I don't like you as much, or it's nothing personal. So don't take it personal, however, take it personal. <laughs> so, many times in our preaching, we're not insinuating that there's a lack thereof, but to challenge us towards more. Can you say amen? Yeah. Ephesians chapter 3, and I want to pick it back up where we left off last week. And I want to start with verse 16, and then go into 17. Verse, chapter 3 of Ephesians, beginning with verse 16. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. That's where we left off last week. Okay. Now, jump into verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith that ye being rooted and grounded in love. Now, I'm going to stop there because verse 17 is a prerequisite for what comes next. Understand that. Verse 17 is a prerequisite for what comes next. It's like going to college. Okay? You can't take this subject or this course, this 325 level course, until you've first taken this course in 101 and this course in 223. Then you can sign up for course 325. Because course 101 and 223 are prerequisites for 325. You can't understand and can't do course 325 until you've done course 101 and 223. And it doesn't matter how, well, you might get away with paying. You know, it depends on whose hand you're greasing. But it doesn't matter how much you pay or how much, you know, you strive towards, you've got to take those two courses. Now, sometimes there are exceptions where maybe you can write. I did that when I was getting my degree at Gonzaga University, and, and I wrote a an expose, so to speak, on, on a certain subject, because I had told the professor that I had already kind of taken this class similar to this at another university, and I didn't want to have to repeat this, waste my time. And so she came to an agreement. I said, can I write an expose on, on this class, what I think it is, what my knowledge is, my experience, and all those types of things. So I wrote that letter. It's about a 15, 20 page expose on the class, and I received a B and didn't have to take that class. But it was based on my prerequisites and my experience that I'd had before. Can you say amen? Okay, so we understand that. So let's understand it. Verse 17 now, for 18, 19, 20, 21 to take place, we've got to accomplish 17. And that is, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, number one, and then number two, that ye be rooted and grounded in love. Now I want to talk about love for just a couple minutes. I love the metaphor that Paul uses here when he talks about rooted and grounded. Now, I'm sure we can reflect back on our seventh grade science class, you know. And so we think in terms of rooted. I love what he's talking about here. The strength of a tree is not its girth. The strength of a tree is not its height. The strength of a tree is not its age. The strength of a tree is determined by the depth of its root. Trees that have roots that do this, that go out shallow, can easily, when storms come by, push them down, collapse them. It's amazing when we go boating and skiing and so forth, and especially in Lake Roosevelt in the middle of the state of Washington where we spent so many years. And we go up this one channel. And, and lit, the rock face is literally like this. It was carved out, you know, a million years ago or however long ago by the, you know, the, the icebergs that were coming down. And the, the walls are just like that. 
And out of the side of these walls are these 75 foot, 100 foot, 150 foot pine trees. And I mean, you know, here's a wall, and they're growing like this. Literally. And when you take your boat, and you have to go slow because it's very narrow. It's about from here to the wall, how narrow this channel is. So you've got to go really slow. And you go under, <laughs> you've got to go under those trees. I mean, they're sticking out. And you just think, holy macaroni. You know, if one of these trees. Now I'm here to tell you, those trees, for however old they are, have experienced a lot of bad weather. They've experienced a lot of heavy rain and s snow, ice, storm, and wind. And I'm here to tell you they're still growing. Like that. Out of brick walls. And you can see half the root system. The roots are gargantuous. Why are they able to continue to grow sideways? Out of a brick wall. Because I'm here to tell you their root system goes really, really deep. Through the rock, through the mud, through the dirt. And that root system is locked onto something. It's locked on tight. And no matter the rain, no matter the snow, no matter the wind, those pine trees are going to continue to grow. Unless one of you go underneath them in your boat, then you might be careful. <laughs> Folks, that's what, the, that's what Paul is saying here. That ye be rooted and grounded. Not in the truth. Let's look at this. Not in the truth. Not in the doctrine. Really grounded truth, doctrine, judgment. No, not rooted and grounded in those things. But rooted and grounded in love. Love is the secure thing. Love is the thing that makes all other things take place. Now, I know for my own life, I want more of this that we're getting to. I want more of this. I want more of God in my life. And I, I don't want, let, let, me, let me just challenge you. Let me just tell you. Let me be a little bit transparent. I don't want just a blessing now and then kind of go and then a blessing now and then kind of go. I want a continual pouring. I want God to continue to pour in me. I want the blessings and the riches and the glory of the Lord, I want, it, I want it to continue more and more on a regular basis. And I don't want it to stop. I want it to continue pouring and pouring and pouring to where it's almost overwhelming. That if I don't get rid of it and pour it out to somebody else, I'm going to go crazy. And I want it to just keep coming. I just want it to keep coming and coming and coming. And I don't want it to shut off. It's kind of like Elijah, which he was sent to the widow. <clears throat> who her and her son were going to die. You know the story. And he performed the miracle for her. And he told her, he said, I need you to go bake, bake a cake for me. She said, well, okay, I'll go do that. But as soon as I bake the cake for you, my son and I were going to die because we were going to bake the last cake. And we were going to eat it and then we were just going to wait till we all die. But okay, since you're a you know, servant of God, I'll bake it for you first. But I'm just here to tell you there's not much. And Elijah said, you know what, just submit yourself and be obedient. And so she did. We know the story. And for the next year, and the reason that it didn't stop for the next year is because then the famine ended and now there was plenty and she could survive on her own now. And she, could, she had plenty. But for that whole year, it didn't stop. And people, let me tell you something. My prayer right now is God, start pouring and don't stop. Pour and don't stop. Pour and pour and pour and pour more. And don't stop. I don't want it to stop. I want to pour and pour and pour. Rooted and grounded in love. And maybe some of you, maybe some of you need to look at some of your children and our grandchildren. Again, not in any way that you haven't. But the other day I had to look at somebody in my family. And I said, listen, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. And you're going to do that because this is what we do. You do that because we are love, because we are family. And this is what you're going to do. I've never, yes you are. This is what you're going to do. I'm not going to, yes you are. This is what you're going to do. Because of love, this is what you're going to do. Now you got to choose your battles, right? You can't do that every time. But let me say this to us, folks. You know what we're entering in? We're entering into the love season. 